Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Let's Make a Game. Oh yes, today I would like to get some production in the joint. If you remember, I already changed the second sprite, the second button to the minor O1. Unfortunately, at the moment, this doesn't do a single thing and also we're not able to really produce the ores. Even though we do now have our conveyor system and we can kind of work with that, we still need a reliable way to get the ores out of there without cheating. At the moment, of course, we're kind of using a developer's mode. So I would say we're gonna get right to that task. As per usual, we of course have to prepare a few things. First and foremost, I want to create another group that is going to be called uh, production, I guess. These are all the objects that are going to produce something in one way or the other. And I actually would like this to be above resources. Can I do that? No, get, 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 come on, come on. Yeah, there we go. Okay, within the production, of course, we're going to create a few sprites or, well, maybe just one for the time being. It's going to be the Sprite Miner 01. Very good. And of course, we're going to create a beautiful image for that. We want to create something new. This time, it's going to be like 3x3 three three tiles. So instead of 32 by 32 pixels, we want 96 by 96 pixels. So hit the OK button and we're going to edit this bad boy and let's make something really interesting. This is going to be like one of my most beautiful miners ever. So we need like a body. And we also need an indication where the stuff is going to be spewed out. So right now the miner is facing towards the top, as you can see. And that is going to be it for the time being, believe me or not. We're going to save that and I'm also going to copy this graphic over so I can actually make another placement object right here. And I would say we're going to do this right off the bat. I'm just going to duplicate this bad boy and we're going to call this sprite object placement 3x3 three three. oh my gosh my writing 3x3 three three. there we go all right that seems good enough however the sprite is not actually correct we want a 96 by 96 of course maybe we can just paste it in here let's see if we can do that paste image from the clipboard use new size oh yes 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 that's what we want to do and we want to delete this guy yeah great and of course we want to buttonize this in some way or the other just to indicate that this is actually the ghost object and not the real thing so we want to hit OK and also make sure that the point of origin is in the dead center as per usual. And we probably need to do this with the miner as well. Yeah, there we go. At the moment, the origin is on the top left, but we want it to be in the center so the rotation is easier. Good. So now we have the new placement object. We have the new miner as sprites. We might want to add a script that we can use. Let's call this script miner 01. I'm also going to add that as a title, Miner01. There you go, buddy. This is going to land on the create event of the miner. And here we are going to have things such as the health pool and whatever other variables we are going to need. So I guess we can work with that. Now, I actually want to have a look into my global variables because I think there are a few things we want to change around. Yeah, for instance, this global conveyor belt speed 01. I would actually rather have this on the conveyor belt itself. So let's see, script. Yeah, that is in the logistics. So the script conveyor belt 01 should have that speed. It actually already has an image speed set to it. So that is interesting. But here it is set to 1. So I don't really understand. But still, we are gonna paste it in right here instead. Let's actually see what happens if we just overwrite this. Anyways, apart from that, we also need to set the new index of the miner. And if you remember, we did it in a way so that the object placement kind of decides what image it currently holds and therefore we are spawning in a new item. Now, since we are using a new object placement, we also have to add that somehow in the description here in the global variables. So right here, I'm gonna say this is objects one by one. And we want to have another title here, objects 3x3. Three three. So here we're going to set all these indexes. So the index minor 01 is actually also 0 if we are thinking object placement 3x3. Three three. So that seems to be good enough. Let's save this bad boy. And also this guy we don't need anymore. Oh, actually, I just see we needed the freaking image speed. We totally needed it. So in here we want to set the image speed to 0.1 the way we had it. 
I don't know exactly what this is for, man. I totally forgot. It's probably the movement, so how fast the items are moving. <laughs> Sometimes hard to keep the overview. Anyways, now that we have the actual miner and also the placement object, we are gonna need corresponding objects to that. So I would say we are gonna create a new object here. And we're gonna call this object, object placement 3x3. Three three. So we stick with our naming kind of, and this should be right there. Anyways, we can do this another time. We want to add a bunch of events to here, namely the create event, where we will add a script we have already done. The script is going to be the placement default. So here we are kind of deciding for the direction the thing is looking in. We've done that in a previous episode and we set it up so that we can simply place it on every new object and it will work. Maybe we have a quick look into here, the placement defaults. So as you can see here, it simply decides in which direction the miner should look or any object the script is on. Another thing that we want is of course a step event where we will add another script which is the object's placement. Maybe let's have a quick look into that as well. So it will decide for the first orientation of the ghost object and it will also make the ghost object follow the mouse etc etc. And I just see I've uh, tested something out here but we want to add a few things to the script. As you can see right here, I'm just doing the check for the object placement one by one. And of course we want to make a statement for the object placement three by three as well. So what we could potentially do is simply copy this over and paste it down below. Let's actually do that right off the bat. We're gonna call this three by three instead, change this to three by three and then switch image index. That's still the thing we want to check, but also we want to change this into minor 01 and in case global index, I think this should also be minor 01. Then we want to create an instance on the X, Y object minor 01. So that is really convenient since we basically set everything up, we can now just copy and paste things over and everything should be working more or less. However, there's a thing we need to change still. Right here we will have to add another and statement because of course we don't want stuff to be able to be placed above each other. That is really important. So we're gonna add the object minor 01 to this statement as well. However, I just see that we haven't really made this object just yet. So I'm guessing that's what we should do now. We're gonna go into creating a group, which we're gonna call production, of course, and that should be beneath logistics. Yeah, beautiful. In here, we want to create another object, which is gonna be the object minor 01, with naturally the graphics of the sprite minor 01. Good, also this object placement, I would like to be on the top here. That should be good. Great, and now also this turned red, which is great. Okay, I hope that didn't go too fast for you, but basically all the scripts we set up we want to do in a way so that we can simply add onto them and don't have to change everything around every time we add a new object. So that's it. There's also another thing I wanted to change in the placement defaults. It seems as though a switch statement would be a lot more suiting here. So maybe we do that. We switch the global placement direction. So in case it is up, we want the image angle to be zero. In case it is right, we want it to be blah -de blah and so on and so forth. Let me quickly finish that. And there we go. I set up all of the directions and we have that now in a more elegant switch statement, at least for stuff like that, the switch statement seems to be more elegant. I guess in the end it doesn't really matter, but there we go. I'm now happy. Great, now we have the object miner, but we are still not running any scripts on that. So we should probably add a create event where we're gonna add the script that we made before, I guess, the script miner01, that should be good. And actually thinking about it, I'm actually gonna need another script. So maybe we make a group out of this as well and call this production, just like we did it with the logistics. And can I get this beneath here? Come on, do me the favor, thank you. We're gonna place the script miner in there and we're also gonna create another script in here, which is gonna be script miner01 step. And that is just, you know, to indicate that it's going to go on the step event. There we go. So now we have these two scripts. The first one is gonna go on the create event. But also on the create event, we of course want to have our usual script, which is the placement default script. 
and also we want to have a third script if you remember we have the script objects variables and these are basically all the variables that apply to all the objects no matter what they are let's actually have a look into the object variables and we can see currently the health is set and also the placement direction is set so that's the thing here what we are missing from this object is still a draw event. If you remember, we also want to get kind of rid of this object using the remove object script right there. And this goes on the draw event. Great. So now we set this up and we can get to coding a bit more, I guess. So at the moment, I still haven't programmed in that we can click the button in order to spawn the miner. So we will have to do that. And if you remember, we do that in the draw GUI event. So right here, we are basically drawing the menu at the bottom. We're drawing the main category buttons and somewhere along these lines right here, we're creating the sub buttons. At the moment, I only have this one here set. As you can see, it is executing an action, the conveyor belt 01 spawnage. So that's what we want to copy over and we want to have a look at the category GUI 02. Oh, one. So this is the first button above the second category. That means we can execute the action right here. We want to copy this over and maybe rename that so we don't get confused. So we want to create an instance at the mouse, but this time it's not the object placement one by one, it's the object placement three by three. And with the object placement three by three, we want to set the image index to the minor 01. There we go. That's the spirit. I think that's all we had to change. Cool. I'm actually really fond of these scripts right now. They seem to be working well without me having to adjust too many things. Okay, let's get rid of that. Now we're going to have a look into the create script, the script miner01. We want to open that bad boy up and check out what we can do here. I guess what we want to do is set a timer so that we know how fast we can mine. The timer I'm going to call mind and we're going to set this to zero. So it's going to start at zero. Hmm, actually, let's start at 100. That seems to be more appropriate. And also we want to set the self minor 01 speed to be equal to one. So basically every 100 frames, it's going to give us an ore. That is the basic aim for the time being. We're going to stick to simple stuff. Cool, so that's all we need to set specifically in the create event for the miner. Now we want to check out the step event right here. What we want to do in the step event is basically, first of all, check for ore. So let's uh, make a title here, check for ores. And we want to set a variable, which I'm just gonna call ore for the time being. So we want to know if instance place x, y object or co. So if there is an instance anywhere, touch my miner then we want the variable or to be equal to object or call item because that's the item we want to spawn right so now we can say else if the instance plays x y object or copper I guess is the next one we want to set the or variable to object or copper item Last but not least, we want to set another else if instance place x, y, object or iron, then we want the or to be object or, or iron item. There you go. No, messed it up. There you go. Cool. Now, I want to set another statement, namely else if there is nothing, right? If there is none of these or items beneath the miner, then we want to set the or variable to nothing, just in case. So maybe we are going to use that, maybe not. Okay, so now that we know whether or not something is beneath us and also what it is, we stored it in a variable. We want to set up the timer I talked about before. So self mind should be minus equal to self minor 01 speed. So after 100 frames, the timer should be at zero. That is all we had to do for the timer. Now we are actually going to spawn the ores at the correct location, right? So for that, we want to check if self mind is either smaller or equal to zero, then we want an ore to be spawned. And in order to determine where we have to spawn the ore, we first have to know in which direction the miner is looking. And of course, we already have that in a variable, so we can make a switch statement with the self placement direction or placement deer. 
that's what we did with the self argument. So switch uh, in case it is up. All right, then we want to do a double point here, instance create. We want to create an instance of the corresponding or item. And we want to do that in case it, the miner is facing up. Of course, the X position is going to remain the same, but the Y position we want to set to minus sprite height divided by two. So half of the miner upwards. But that will only bring us to the very border of the miner. So we have to add or additionally add minus global dot tile size divided by two. And this will give us the rest little nook that we needed in order to get into the center of the tile that is directly above the miner. What we want to spawn, of course, is the current ore that is beneath the miner. And of course, eventually we need to set it up so not multiple ores can be beneath the miner, but you know, that is something for later. We want to set a break right here and continue with the right words direction, I would say. And here we want to again create an instance, but this time at the X plus sprite width position divided by two and also an additional global dot tile size or half a global dot tile size. Then at the Y coordinates and the OR should spawn. Then we need another break. I'm gonna do the case down direction. So here we also want to create an instance as per usual. Create X and here it's gonna be the Y plus sprite height divided by two plus an additional global dot tile size divided by two and we want to spawn the ores. Man, it's sometimes crazy to comment everything you're writing. Still have to get used to that. Anyways, it's the last direction that we want to do, which is X, Y, no, actually X minus sprite width divided by two minus global dot tile size divided by two and we want to spawn it at the y coordinate and we want to spawn the or there we go that's the last break we needed and now we need to reset the timer so basically this is happening once the timer is at zero and after this has happened we of course also want to reset the timer reste <laughs> reset the timer so all we have to do for that is self mind equals 100 again Great! I think we are done actually. That that's I think that's all we had to do. Oh man, I'm not sure. Let's just test the freaking game. So there we go. We can have a look into the production. We can open up the miner and there we go. We have the button object, the ghost object following us. The mass cursor still disappears. It seems to be aligning correctly and I can place those guys in any direction I like. So that is good. Now, of course, one thing I still haven't prevented from happening is that ores can overlap with each other. However, I still would like to see this function so we're gonna place one of these guys on the iron ore and theoretically after a while stuff should spawn. Ooh, I have the feeling I forgot something. Right now I can place the miners, but it's not doing anything. Ah, yes, of course. We need to add the step event right here. I totally forgot to add the miner script step. That's what we did just before we wanted to test this. There we go. Now, of course, with that, it should work a little bit better. So there we go. Miner, I want you to go right there and we should be seeing... Ah... There we go. Another mistake in the variable on line 17. Yeah, there we go. Placement deer. Jesus. Third time is the charm. There we go. Let's place this bad boy and please. Yes. Yes. Okay. This is working. It's spawning a ore. Let's try to do it into the other direction. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm so happy. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so freaking happy. Let's see this actually uh, function. Oh my gosh. We're doing it, guys. We're doing it. Yes, okay. Now the only problem of course is still we are overlapping all of the ores. That is something that we definitely need to prevent from happening. I already received a bunch of suggestions on how we can do that, but it is not my most pressing concern. I mean, look at that. It is beautiful. Anyways, guys, I think at this note, we're gonna wrap up the episode. I sure hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave down your feedback and likes. It helps me out a lot. And also, if you see something that I could do better, I'm absolutely willing to listen. But other than that, have a great time and hopefully I'm gonna catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.